Thank you. Thanks for coming back. So we are going to do two recipes. One is a side in the side chapter, and it is something we kind of came up with together because I love two things more than anything in the world, sriracha and nooch. How many of you know nooch, nutritional yeast? Yeah, um, this is this wonderful, weird, funky powder. It's like once you go plant-based, you learn about nooch, and it's like this hidden secret ingredient. It has the B vitamins or whatever, but it just really gets this cheesy, delicious flavor in it. So he wanted to try to find ways to get me more nooch and sriracha. <laughs> this is our favorite little party way to do so. So how do we make these, Raymond? Yeah, so I, this one, I think, is on page 20 in that booklet, if you want to do that. Oh. And both of these recipes Sorry. we have are actually pretty easy, easy to do, so they don't require a lot of you know fancy stuff. This one, what's really great about this stuffed mushrooms is that you can actually take them anywhere, and nobody will really question what they're stuffing with. So um, one of the things we once one of the things that we do that's um, a little different. Sorry. Oh, I'm 19. sorry. Nineteen. Thank you. Now, one Page of the 19. things we do that's a little different is that you know when you get your your whole mushroom here. Um, well, there's this stem that we all pull out, right? And especially when we're stuffing it, we'll pull the stem out, and then we throw this thing away. Well, it turns around, there's a lot of mushroom in there, right? The mushroom, there's a lot of stuff in the stem. So what we came up with is a way to take the mushroom stems, chop them up, and then use them back in this cashew cheese sauce to cut some of that fat so that you can eat them all. And we do. So, so we when, do. when we talked, when we talked about, when we talked about our recipes in the books, you know, soup, salad, sides, and sweets, and Juliana was telling you guys, like, just sit down with these recipes and just get, grab a spoon and go. <laughs> grab a spoon and go. Really and truthfully, that's the way they're designed because the entire calorie content of this first recipe is this thing of, of well, cashews. Now, you wouldn't want to eat this every day. It's a half a cup total. It's a half a cup. And there's going to be 24 mushrooms. So like right. we, we share the 24 mushrooms. And that's your quart, that's your one to two ounces of nuts and seeds a day, all in a delicious little package. <laughs> so, But I wanted to point out with this first one, and the reason we picked this is, one, it's something anybody who likes spicy stuff, anybody likes kind of cheesy, you know, those kinds of hors d'oeuvre foods. We're my spicy not, people. That you're, yeah, where yeah, are you? Yeah, my okay. friends. I'll tell you in the samples, they cut oh, it yes. down. They we, cut it by a third because <laughs> we're a little we too spicy. More. <laughs> yeah, I impressed my Thai friends too. So, so, that, so, so that's the, more. It's, it's an example for you guys to see that what we're able to do with a plant-based diet is eat more food but still get 30% less monkey chow. Yeah, more volume, less monkey chow. So the other second thing, you heard Juliana talking about making dressings and sauces and using nuts as the fat source for those. And so one of the things that will really help you, um, I, I actually, I, we have a blend tech, we have a Vitamix, but I use like the standard Nutribullet almost every single day because that small jar, how many people have a Nutribullet? Okay, that it's little so small easy. jar is the easiest way to make sauces. Easiest and once to wash you, too. Once, <laughs> once you get really great at making dressings and sauces, you can do it so fast without a recipe, just boom, 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 throw it all in there and get it done. But the big trick to using it is what I'm about to just do. I just put all the dry goods in, this, in the blender first. So without putting any liquid in there, and I haven't used this one, so hopefully it doesn't, this doesn't backfire on me. I'll stand back just in case. <laughs> Is there a switch? I don't know. I've never seen this one before. Is there a trick? Oh, you figured it out. All right. So, so what you want to do is pulse it a couple of times like that. And what you, what you want to try to avoid is don't keep going until it becomes nut butter and starts clumping together. Stop right there where just it's... Just make it a powder. Let's see. Let's get under here. Stop right here. Are, are we above? Oh, you were over there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, so stop when it gets like this. When, when it gets kind of like a powder, stop at that point because at that point, it'll start absorbing all the liquid and it'll give it all that delicious goodness that you want. And then once you start blending it with the liquid, it'll break down a little farther. If you make it all gummy, it makes a mess and it sticks at the top. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? So. <laughs> but they're done that. You only do that once. Do that. So, um, so right. let's actually go through these ingredients. So, so now we're going to do the water, which is really the bell pepper. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the one really great thing about bell pepper is it adds flavor, but it also is our water source. Because and once nutrition. you do it. Right, because it's got a lot of water, but it's also a great way to get more carotenoids and more nutrition. 
And then I'm going to put this and garlic. And sweet. It also is kind of a sweet for this. There's two, two garlic cloves, cloves of gar garlic. And garlic, um, you, can, you can actually put big chunks in there if you're going to do like a, a paste. I like to mince it because it's nothing worse than biting into the big chunk and it didn't get circulated and all that. And then we have Our acid uh, two, is tablespoons two tablespoons of lemon. And then technically, we have, the ones you're going to have has one tablespoon of sriracha, but we do three. But I mean, I, I didn't think it was that spicy, to be honest. So to each his own. And you can go up or down as you please. I would, pro I would probably add some more on top. We do, yeah, there you go. He knows how to feed me. And that's it. That's the sauce. And we're going to blend it. We may need just a little bit of water. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, water. We have water. Oh, here. Got a bit of water. Mmm, looking perfect. Can you guys hear me if I talk over that? Like, I would use that as a dressing on my salad. That's my favorite dressing, basically, just like that. Not so close. now what I'm going to do with these, um, with these um, mushroom stems is start to chop these up. If you, you can, if you have a lot of them to do, you can pulse them in just a food processor as long as it's on the slow speed. But, but you don't want to blend But them you in. don't want to blend them because they'll just turn to water. So what's going to happen with these mushroom uh, stems as I make them smaller and finer is they're going to actually create the body and the thickness of the sauce. It. I'll get it off. This oh. happened to me the other day because there's this vortex that happens with the heat. I love. I made my dressing and left it because I was so excited to have it as soon as I got Vacuum. home from my meeting. Vacuum. And I call. I came home and I could, for the life of me, I was like desperate to get into my dressing and I couldn't. And I'm like, I, I asked my chemist. I'm like, heat or cold? What do I do? How do I get it out? I was about to smash my Nutribullet. So it just happened again. I'm glad you're here this time. Just it a little hot. warm water. I like, it up. made it really hot with the hot. I kept blending and I put it in the hot water and then my rubber gloves. I was determined because it was my favorite dressing and I was hungry. You know, you're like, I'll do anything. But it worked. The heat worked. So I have it. So they made some extra here and with the mushrooms. So I had some on the dressing and it wasn't cooked. So it was like you have that raw mushroom thing. So we, it's better when you cook it because this is all going to go into the oven after we stuff the mushrooms with this. But this is basically the filling for the mushrooms. I bet it would work for other, other vegetables, like maybe an eggplant or something. All right, they're good. Just now open that one. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I could have done that. That could have made me useful here. It's kind of fun, like... I like to have someone cooking for me now because he just doesn't let me help. He just does everything. And I'm like, okay, I'll just stand here and keep you company and I get to enjoy the benefit. So what I'm going to do is put this in this bowl. So we start with these bits and pieces of mushroom. See, there, these are just the decapped mushrooms. I wonder if there's a spatula somewhere. He decapitated. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Violence in a plant-based kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> So do, how many of you go to Costco to buy food sometimes? They right? have the best mushrooms there. They have the there. best mushrooms there and the best salad bags. I just kind of don't use the stuff with the dressings and stuff. But they have some great deals on vegetables. And they have a lot of organic. My favorite thing, and they finally came back, are their sweet potatoes are back in season. They had the best sweet potatoes. Yeah, the big, I get like two or three. Oh, I have not seen that in mine yet. So what, they had cauliflower rice for a while, and they stopped. But so gosh, as I, I stir that. this, what you're going to see is it starts getting thicker and thicker as it's coating all those mushroom bits. Do you, can you guys see that on the camera? If, so yeah, I just had this raw, and it was kind of... You don't really want to do raw mushrooms because there's a compound that needs to be destroyed with cooking um, in terms of... I don't know how acutely toxic it is, yeah, but it's kind of mildly toxic. <laughs> so don't try this at home. It's a, it's a better than, not a critical. Well, this little guy has some space, too. 
So these, and then these are basically gonna go, you, in the meanwhile, you're preheating the oven. Look at this, takes five minutes. There was no real prep time. Like the garlic, it can get pre-minced. You could chop up a, you could rough hack a red pepper. We buy the jarred, you could also get at Costco, the jarred red peppers, the roasted red peppers. That's delicious in here. I usually do that one. You still get the same. You get like even more kind of sweetness from the roasted, the caramelization process. So five minutes, you throw it all in a blender, toss them in here. The, the longest part and the most painful part is waiting for them to bake. How long is it baked for? 30 minutes, 30 yeah, it's a long 30 minutes. And interestingly, they get a little seepy, the mushroom. You know, mushrooms really sweat. A lot of stuff comes out of them. I've learned that lately. Um, so you may notice that with the parchment paper, it gets kind of wet, so be careful when you're taking them out of the oven. We have experimented with putting, like, trays down with the wire mesh trays. That helped a little bit. Yeah, the other thing is... But they're um, nice and moist, though. Um, we actually shop a lot at the Asian store, too, because oh, they yeah. have... Really great mushroom selection, really great, all kinds of greens that you've really never had before. Really great good vegetables, great prices. And, Lots um, of and so, one time, uh, a, a, a suggestion we were sitting there at, at the store, and Juliana said, Hey, what about shiitake mushrooms? Because we use them in everything for, she said I would eventually bring up umami, and this is one. Oh, so, yeah. shiitakes are very, very high in a, in a compound called um, guanolate, which is uh, it's a, it's a ribonucleotide, which is like a glutamate, which is this umami flavor, this fifth fifth flavor. And we actually did this in stuffed shiitakes. Now, shiitakes have a very strong flavor, which is why they get put in a lot of Asian dishes. But it turns out if you do this exact same thing, use a couple of the baby bellows or the oyster mushrooms if you get them there at the Asian store, chop those up for the filler, and then oh, yeah. fill that, fill this filling inside shiitakes, it's really, really delicious. But we didn't like the shiitakes as the mushroom base as much. It was a little too, I don't know, chewy. We liked it on in the inside. No, I, well. Oh, is that what you were saying? I was saying the other. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I prefer these. So I liked them when we used them on the inside. But you get the idea here. We're just, all we're going to do is stuff and bake these. And then what Juliana said is so important, which is as you're baking right. them, <laughs> they will slowly start to sweat because they're in the oven. They'll slowly start to sweat. And you want to get them at that right point where the liquid has come off and starts to dry away. Cook them long enough or they they're kind of soggy. You, do, you, do you guys understand what I'm saying in there? So you just kind of watch them. And as you go through, you'll, you'll after two or three times. And just imagine, I mean, like, we can still keep stuffing here. But this is a lot of food. I mean, if you're just sitting down eating these things... And we, we've made them, we thought we're, well, maybe we just like them because we're just, we like each other's food. And then we brought them, we did them for like guests and friends and we went to par like party food because it's a good appetizer. People love them, like they're gone in two seconds. So we, now we have to double or triple the recipe. So that's um, the extent of it. You can also use this to stuff a lot of other things as well. You can put them in, in peppers, in those, those small little um, peppers. Baby that they, bells. Oh, no. The, the little Baby ones, peppers. the little sweet ones that you can get in the big bag, right? Cut them in half. I also put, we put um, guacamole in those as well. But you can bake some of those. So you can use this, this general sauce. It's actually good for that. Or again, my... you just take a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite way. I don't know if we can actually get these baked if we need to, but that's, that's it. That's the extent of it. It's pretty easy. We like really easy recipes. Like we just want to make it easy and fast to get to our mouth. <laughs> At least I do. So that's your recipe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Susan. All right. So when we when we talk about you know salads and we talk about flavor, um, in this next recipe, it was actually something I had in Cape Cod, and um, I, I got some of the ingredients from the from the from the menu, but it was a flavor. And, um, and what I like about this recipe, and I think this one is the one that's, is it page six? Is that right, seven? Something the like Cape that. Cape Cod, ke apple, cannellini. So when we talk about the flavors, when we talk about the flavors, um, you know, we have sweet, sour, <clears throat> bitter, right? What else, salty, right? And then we have umami. And umami is this fifth flavor that we really in our Western culture don't put a lot, of ben a lot of emphasis on. Where we normally get it are in chicken stock, bone broth, uh, beef broth, those kinds of things. But it turns out that in many other cultures, umami is actually revered, even from the time. In fact, we take neonates when they're first born, 
Umami is one of those flavors that a baby responds to. They, they respond to sweet and they respond to umami. And so the, the amino acid, we talked about those amino acids that build up proteins, right? The 20 amino acids. And one of those amino acids is, is glutamate and glutamine, or you call it glutamine in the other form. But glutamate, glutamic acid, is what triggers this flavor. And it makes you salivate. It makes food just taste really well. So when you have these funky, fishy, if you've ever gone to Asian stores, the funky, fishy, salty snacks that children just eat up, like the squid stuff, our Thai friends just love this stuff. You open the bag of it in the car and it smells like unbelievably bad, but they just love it because they like that umami the way we like sweet. And one of the problems is, is that umami is one of those things that you can't if you don't have something to taste, you don't know what it is. Like if I say sweet, well, you guys have had sugar. You know what sweet is. But if you've only had a banana, a banana tastes like a banana. And an apple tastes like apple. And honey tastes like honey. It's sweet, but it's something else, right? And that pure umami is the evil monosodium glutamate. <sighs> MSG. It's one of those three-letter words, right? Well, it turns out that this whole thing with MSG started with a 358, 358-word uh, letter to the editor of 1968 called Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. There's really no science to any of those issues of, of what you've seen. There's, it's one of the most studied additives there is. And what's really amazing, and we do this in our cooking classes and our cooking schools, we take vegetable broth and we use vegetable broth, the regular vegetable broth, which is very bland, vegetable broth plus MSG, vegetable broth plus another two other ones, inosinate, which is found primarily in seafood, but they make it commercially using yeast, and then guanolate, which is one of the ones in mushrooms that we just saw. So we got some umami over there. Um, it turns out when anybody goes to this demo and you try it, you try the vegetable broth, and then you try the one with MSG, and then when you do the, what's called MSG plus, it's not available in the US, but the rest of the world uses it. It's so profound, the flavor, and it tastes like vegetable. It makes the vegetables just, you can taste all the vegetables. It wakes up your taste buds in a way. Now, there definitely was probably some issue. You know, MSG does have sodium in it if you're on a sodium restricted diet, but, but it has about a third. It has a, th yeah, it has 30% less sodium than sodium, than salt, than table salt. So I That's say that because in this, that. in this next recipe, um, it actually has some things that we really don't have. So one of the things it has in it is endives, and these endives add a bitter flavor. So we're going to get bitter. We have, you know, the celery, when celery has that aromatic flavor, but it also has a salty flavor. How many people are on a no-sodium diet or don't add salt, no, no salt. added salt? And you guys know, when you eat a piece of sal celery or shard is another one. When I eat uh, Swiss chard, it tastes really salty to me because we just don't add it that much. It has sweet in it, and the, and the sweet comes from, from the apple that's in the recipe, right? So you get a lot of these things going on. It has the aromatic flavors and some umami in the red onion, and then, of course, another sour being the vinegar, okay? It has the raisins in there. It has the, 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 the mustard. So what's really interesting about the salad is it's really easy to make, and it has all of those things, you know? Has when I first all of those he flavors. showed me this recipe, he's like, I have to make this for you. I used to make this all the time, and I'm like... Uh, I don't like fruit, uh, it doesn't sound so sweet, it sounds too sweet. And I'm like, okay, make it. And I was like, I'll have one bite, because it was for the book. And I, I ate the whole salad. I was like, this is the best, co it was so balanced because of all these different elements. It just doesn't sound, it's, it's a very humble sounding salad. Okay. So, so, so the end I do the... No, but first, before you do any of this, you are to, you, you can mandolin or shave some red onion. And fortunately that's already been done for us. But basically just shaving into small pieces as you could maybe hold up. Um, can you guys see this? Uh, the endive's in there too, it's all raised. No, but just the bowl, it has onion. Basically, it's shaved red onion, there it is, red onion. It's been soaking in rice vinegar, and you could do this ahead of time. In fact, what we like to do is we do this with onion, and we do it with thin sliced cucumber as well. You just pour this in there, there's nothing in here. It's like, well, the one I have at home has zero calories, mm. zero anything, it's just, it's just vinegar, and it adds a ton of flavor. And you soak it in there, marinate it in there, and it's really nice on every salad. Like you just, when you're making it, you have a big bunch of it in the fridge and you can just put some on whatever salad you're having, you can eat it straight up. Like you get that sometimes at a Japanese how, restaurant. How many people don't like red onions? Or they're too oniony for you, raw ones? Sriracha, but not the red onion, huh? <laughs> oh. So there's a lot of people that, that, that 
flavor really hits them hard with the red onion, and this is a way to get that raw red onion in, because actually those compounds are good. The sulforaphane, some of the other compounds are in, in there. Um, great, uh, the raisin, White, yellow the raisins, raisins, yellow raisins. raisins. There's some thyme in here. So, oh, show them how you do the thyme. You're so good at that. Does anybody want to know how to strip thyme? <laughs> We're getting and a little saucy. Here. The pickles add the salty flavor. You do it oh, so no. well. Yeah, just go in the opposite direction and the little leaves come yeah, off. Yeah, you actually have to go in the opposite direction yeah. of what you would think, so. Um, and then and the celery. celery. And the, oh, cool. I learned about these from you too, the cornicons, did you already put those in there? Yes. The little pickles? Do you guys know about those? The little baby, I didn't either. I'd never heard of them in my life. And I was at the store the other day, when he was, when I, he was in Alabama, and I was at the store going, okay, I'm gonna make this recipe. And I was like, where would you find the cornicon? And I had to look everywhere. So explain what they are, because I still don't really know what they are. Well, they're, they're, just, baby little, they're just little pickles, but they're great. They, they have a lot of flavor. They're really great is that that one brand has the little, the little thing you can pull them out so the pickles don't get all messed up. You can pull them up out of the, out of the, uh, out May, of the container. May, May, is that the one? At my, yeah. yeah. They're really good. It's a lot of little salty little hits, pickle hits. And then ground black pepper. Oh, lemon juice. A little bit of lemon juice for you get the more acidic little hit. And then black pepper. And you can amp it up with black pepper if you want. It's such an unassuming salad. I can't wait for you guys to taste it. And you heard that there's cannellini beans, so you get your legumes. This is like a, everything in there, except for the mushrooms, but you're gonna get that anyway. So you're getting your vegetables, so, fruits, so grains, legumes, mushrooms, nuts. So when they made these, you know, we also, we um, have that thing, we don't cook with oil. And what we mean by cooking with oil is we don't grab a bottle of oil and put it in a pan. We cook all of our vegetables, um, we cook all of water. our vegetables with water. And <clears throat> the reason why is that we wanna make sure that we keep the water in the vegetable. You know, for example, if you dehydrate everything, you end up eating more of it because the water is gone. So even with potatoes, we end up eat, baking and eating the potato whole most of the time. And if we do the air fryer or whatever, those become sort of more rare and appropriate because it's easier to eat a lot more food when you toss out all the water, right? So what's really interesting about this recipe is when I first made the, when I first had this, I'm, I'm pretty sure it actually also had Parmesan in it as well, but I cut the Parmesan out. But the other thing that it had in there was a small little, uh, you know, sort of a vinaigrette that they made with the mustard, the, a little olive oil, whatever. And when I first made this, Juliana had her typical every time I get out olive oil. Now, when I to talk about this, I have a four ounce bottle of robust olive oil and a four ounce bottle of light olive oil. And I never use all four ounces. I throw them away because they get rancid. Because since I don't use oil, I can actually smell that it's rancid. Where most people who are glug, glug, glug oil, you have no idea you're putting rancid oil on your, on your stuff. You know, it probably doesn't hurt you. Maybe it helps the microbiome, I don't know. But the point is, no, it doesn't it smell doesn't. or taste good to me. So the point is, I, when we talk about oil, and we'll talk about this in the book, we're talking about in a culinary sense. We're gonna add it for a certain mouthfeel. So we're gonna take this one out there too so people can try this, because what you're gonna be surprised is a difference in flavor, just two small amounts. They actually ran out to get it for us. Two small little teaspoons of olive oil are gonna make. Now here's a secret about oil and salt, and these are the last two, because this also works with salt, which is, Potato chips and bread, a serving of potato chips, serving of bread, in most cases, the bread has more salt than the potato chips. Most of them are at least equal, but most of the time, the bread has more salt than the potato chips. But we stop and say, why is that? Well, the problem is with the potato chip, you've deep fried it, which pushes the water, the water steams out of it. That's what causes it to get crisp. The oil gets in the potato chips. Salt doesn't dissolve in oil, so it sits on the surface hits your tongue first. With bread, it's cooked in. The same thing if you cook beans or anytime you're putting salt and cooking with salt or cooking with oil, you're driving it into the food for no good reason because it doesn't do any good if it's not on your tongue, right? You just don't get there, right? So what's really interesting about what we're doing here is we're gonna add this two teaspoons at the end and stir it up. It's on the very outside. Now think about it. You spilled two teaspoons of of, of olive oil on, on your dress or 
even on whatever, and you've got to clean it up. It's a mess, right? If you don't have soap, it, you're just smearing it around, right? So there's not much there. It's on the surface. It won't go into the food because the food is full of water. It sits on the surface, which also then allows us to use that potato chip effect. So if you like things a little saltier, but you don't want to use excess salt, cook with water, put that little film last, and then put a little bit of soy sauce or a little bit of what you normally use, a salty thing that you maybe use. Obviously, you can use Benson's Table Tasty, table tasty or like one that. of the, the other ones. So there are other ways to do it. But if, you're, if you use those salty components and put them last, they'll sit on the surface. But the, so ba the background here is that oil is technically a processed food, right? We stripped out all the fiber, all, most of the nutrition, and it's pure fat, 100% pure fat. So I never had a recipe in any of my books that had any oil in it whatsoever. I don't use it. And we don't, we really don't. So his, what he, his bridge has been, because there's only, I think, four, five, six recipes in the whole book that have a tiny bit of oil out of 100 plus. Um, his bridge to me was... It is a flavoring, it is not an ingredient. So it's like a rosemary. We're not cooking We're with not it. cooking with it. We're not like dousing it. And so it's a teaspoon for, this is like, I don't know, six servings, four or six servings of it. And I use this one because where we mostly use it is not all, we hardly ever do this. Where we use it is sesame oil and chili oil, okay? If you're doing Asian cooking, now, the way they do it, they put it all in first and they use a lot of it. And palm oil. <laughs> and palm oil, right? But what we do is we water cook and water saute and water stir fry, and then we use the sesame oil at the very end. You'll see in our recipes a teaspoon quantity. For like four servings. Now, I've getting sh I get shut out of Facebook groups because I dare put a teaspoon of oil in something. It's this big catastrophe, and I haven't used the three-letter MSG word yet, but boy, that's going to mess them up, right? Um, <laughs> I put the science out there first. None of our recipes have it in there, but that's, that's, it's there. Um, but this, using sesame oil really makes a huge difference in cooking in terms of getting that mouthfeel of what you do. By the way, the reason why those steamed vegetables at the Asian re at Chinese restaurants always taste good is because most of the time what they do is they take the regular raw vegetables, they blanch them really quick in oil, and they shake all that oil off, and then they steam them. And that, that oh, keeps them green and crisp. bright. Yeah. They're green and bright, and, they, and they're real. That's why. And that little, tiny, little film, like they're not deep fried. I'm not saying that they leave them. They just hit it, stop it. I was watching my, some people that cook, and I was watching them. I kept thinking, that's steamed vegetable, but they're putting it in oil. So it's not exactly what we think. But anyway, with this recipe, um, when you taste the other one and taste this one, you'll taste the yeah, difference. Yeah, the other one doesn't have any oil in and it. And this is the least the one you're amount gonna taste. of, yeah, the, this is the least amount of effect on this, but. And if you're it, brave, you could try the one with some oil, too. Yeah. <laughs> we but, could do a demo, actually. Can yeah, we do a little, oh, okay, we got to wrap up. Do we have to wrap up?